say good morning or good afternoon, depending upon which coast you might live on. Um, we are so excited that you've joined us today for the Sky Developer webinar series. Um, today, uh, we're going to be talking about the brand new uh, certified connector between Microsoft Power Platform and the Blackboard Razor's Edge NXT. So um, a couple of housekeeping items before I introduce Cody and get you guys running with today's material. Uh, first off, um, we are going to be recording today's session and you'll receive a recording, you'll receive the recording via email later on today. Additionally, the webinar, uh, the audio for today's webinar is going to be broadcast through your computer. So if for any reason you're having problems with the slides not refreshing or with the audio, um, a good first troubleshooting step is to refresh your browser. Lastly, um, we're going to be monitoring the Q&A during today's call. So if you have questions as Cody is presenting or if you have um, comments or questions in general during today's webinar, don't hesitate to click on that purple Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen to help uh, ask any questions that you might have. Finally, um, as part of today's webinar, we're going to be showing both PowerPoint slides as well as some live demo of how um, the solution works. So during those sessions of today's webinar, you will need to select the red um, media player option um, in the bottom of your screen in order to see um, in order to see the live demo section. So without further ado, I am super excited to introduce my partner in crime for today, Cody Jackson. Uh, Cody, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about about yourself, and then uh, you can go ahead and get started with today's material. Sure thing. Howdy, everybody. Uh, I'm contractually obligated to say that because I'm from Texas. Uh, so from North Dallas originally, but currently residing in Austin. Um, I've been at BlackBot for just over three years, I think a month over three years. And in that time, I've worked with a crap ton of products. Uh, but most importantly for this, Razor's Edge NXT, done a lot of training for that. Uh, also, in a previous life, I worked as an e-learning consultant and a teaching assistant for large classes at a university. Um, a fun fact about me is that I'm a triplet, so I have an identical brother and a fraternal sister, and the even funner part is that's his headshot in there. That's not my headshot. We switch off about every two years because getting headshots is really expensive and annoying, and it kind of works for us. Uh, and, and then relevant to today's webinar, I am a pretty avid user of Power Automate. My first exposure to this wasn't actually through blackboard or razor's edge nxt it was we had a very manual process on the documentation team for collecting feedback and um by using power automate um i figured out how to scrape emails send that information to a google uh, a google sheet and then automate some reporting and that saved our team especially one of our senior managers about 10 hours a week of time and it took me about five or six hours to build it. So just very excited about what Power Automate has to offer, um, as well as hopefully a little bit more of a real world perspective on the benefits. So just as a reminder, if you weren't aware, today is a one in a series of webinars all about extending the Blackboard Razor's Edge NXT platform. And so this is number five. And so if you want to see any of those other uh, webinars, they're available for recording at hello.blackbot.com slash Blackbot Marketplace. We'll also be offering another session on Power Apps, which is uh, another Microsoft product and part of this Power Platform ecosystem. We're going to be doing that on Thursday, same time, different link. So if you want to join us for that or get that recording, uh, just go ahead to that website. And so today we're going to talk through a, a, a simple scenario for using Power Automate. And, and just to set the stage, the goal of this webinar, I'm definitely going to be talking to some more advanced tips and tricks and you know answering any questions that you may have. But the goal of this is to get you up and running as quickly as possible on Power Automate. And so it, we're going with kind of a simple scenario today. Not saying that it won't help you if you're more advanced, but we're going to be starting from the ground up to try and get you up and running. Uh, so 
with that, so today's scenario, what we really want to do, so I'm at this hypothetical organization, and what I've really noticed is that I want more of a connection between my donors and my program staff. So it's good for the donors because they can understand, you know, where their money is going. They can get a better connection to the work that's actually happening in the day to day. And that's also good for my program staff because it gets them connected. They understand where the money is coming from, what they can do to help our fundraising efforts. And I really want to build this bridge between them. And so what with that in this scenario, my thought is, hey, it would be great if there's an expectation of if a gift comes in over a certain amount related to your fund, you could send it, you know, you could send a quick email or have a quick phone call with that donor, just thanking them for their time and their generosity. And so that's a, that's a good goal. But the problem is, of course, program staff, you know, one, like you might not be in Razor's Edge and XT every day. You might not be in it every week. <laughs> You're in it very frequently. And also, you have a lot of other things to do. You have the actual work of the nonprofit happening. And so if I'm going to expect them to, you know, be in charge of this and be on top of this, if I don't help them out, it's going to be that awkward situation where I'm asking them to do something and checking in on them and trying not to bug them. So the best way to do this, I think, is by automating that process. So instead of somebody having to go in and keep track of a list in Razor's Edge NXT, I'm going to send them an email notification saying, hey, here's this gift over a specific amount. It's from this constituent for this amount. Here's some contact information. And so that's kind of the goal of today's session to build this. And we'll start out simple and then we'll jump into a little bit more complicated things. And so just about three minutes of prep and then we'll jump into this demo. Um, so if you're thinking about prerequisites, so what do I need to get started? Obviously, Razor's Edge and XT, you can't get GIFs out of a database without having a database. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, you. Yeah, that, that's kind of a prerequisite. So the other one is going to be Microsoft Power Automate. We'll speak to this more at the end. There isn't a charge for on the BlackBot side for access to the, the connector, but using Power Automate has some charges associated with it. But we have some materials to help you make that decision, and we'll talk to that more at the end. And finally, it, it's a little bit corny. It's a little bit, uh, you know, hopeful, but it, imagination is an important part of this, both the ability to recognize when Power Automate is a good option for the problem you're having, and then also um, how to get to your outcome using those building blocks that are in Power Automate. And so I've been talking a lot about Power Automate. It is a workflow automation tool built by Microsoft, and it's meant for people who don't have a lot of coding experience. So if you're familiar with Razor's Edge 7, it's really similar to macros, just the kind of thought process of you want to do a lot of things together in a sequence. But it's even better than that because you can connect to systems that are outside of Razor's Edge a lot easier. And now with this new connector, um, that is actually part of this Power Automate ecosystem. So you can connect to Office 365, to Teams, to Twitter, to a lot of places without a lot of coding work. It's very nice. And so uh, just quick terminology, there are three things you need to know about Power Automate. Number one, they're triggers. So what kicks off your workflow? So is that when somebody tweets at you? Um, is that when a new somebody fills out a form, you could trigger it manually, set periods of time. They're connectors. So basically, what other things is your workflow talking to? That could be Razor's Edge NXT, Office 365, Gmail. And finally, they're controls. And think of that as kind of your workflow logic, how you build in some quote unquote coding. Um, and so that's just, you know, if this, then that, um, or working through different items on a list. Uh, and what that looks like in action is just at the start of this, uh, the trigger is whenever you receive an email in Outlook, 
we have an action related to our connector and ra that raises edge NXT connector. And then there's some coding logic saying, if you know, you're searching for this constituent, you might get a couple constituents. So for each of those records, because you have to, you have to tell Power Automate, hey, there are going to be multiple things. I want to do the same thing for each of those things. Add the email as an action on the constituent record. So for today's scenario, what we're going to do is our trigger is going to be, it's going to be every month we're, we're going to send out this gift notification email. And, and for your organization, it probably is going to be every day or maybe every hour <laughs> or every you know four hours, something like that. The only reason I did every month I'm doing that is I was a little bit too lazy to add a lot of a lot of test gifts in their sample database. That is the only reason it's every month. I would highly recommend you do it sooner. Uh, we're going to connect to Rage's Edge NXT and also Mail, and then we're going to be using three controls. So we're going to do an apply to each. So everything in this list, we're going to do something. I'll show you a little bit about a condition statement, and then if we have time, we'll jump into a switch statement, which is where you get to some really cool branching of if A, go to here, if B, go to here, if C, go to here, if nothing matches, do this other thing. So without further ado, we're going to jump into this demo. So just two, uh, two warnings before we start. One, um, demoing doing live demos is a little bit like working with live animals. Sometimes things go wrong, so I, I appreciate your patience, and we'll, we'll try and minimize that, but it's a definite possibility. The other thing is I'm about to start sharing my screen, and so you're going to see, you're going to need to open up your media player in order to see that. Okay, so I'm starting to share my screen. And with that, one other caveat is we have an entirely separate documentation website. And actually, we have how you get started and even kind of a version of this tutorial already set up for you. So if, if you want to take notes, if you want to take detailed step-by-step -step notes, that's great. If not, we already have a lot of those notes for you, and, and this is included in the resources. We'll also make sure to share this at the end of the presentation. But just so you know, you don't have to freak out if you miss a step. So going into Power Automate. So we're in Power Automate. We're going to start out. And if you, you can expand this side menu here if you like. Um, but so we're going to start out, we're going to create a flow. And so there are a couple of different options. And so one is going to be an automated flow. That's something that's triggered by an external event. An instant flow, maybe it's something you want to go in and click a button. You have some control over it. For today, we're going to do a scheduled flow. So we're going to say this is our gift notification, email, and I don't remember how many of these I've made, so I'll say number four. And we're going to say that this is going to repeat every month. So we're going to click Create. And it takes us into this workflow builder. And so from there, so just looking at this, we're going to see, OK, it's every month. And if we wanted to, we could actually choose the time zone. We could choose the start time. Since this is every month, this isn't that much of a concern for me. Um, it, it doesn't happen enough to matter. But if you're doing something you know, every hour or every couple of hours, that might actually be really important. You might want to use your set your starting time or your the, the limits to it only during work hours. But this is good enough for me every month. So we're going to add a new step. Uh, and the the Reese's Edge NXT connector is located under premium. You can get to it from all, but it's easier to get to it here. Uh, so you just type in Blackboard. And what we want to do is every month, we want to get a list of gifts. OK, and that's, that is a lot of options. So that's good. Um, but uh, so what we want to do is choose what types of gifts we want. So if we wanted to, we could pull in a list that we've already created in Razor's Edge NXT. 
I'm not going to do that. I just want to call directly to the API. So what I care about is I want to, and you can get a lot more information by hovering over these fields, getting that hint text. So I want to make sure, so the default here is 500. I want to make sure, I don't think I'll have over 500, but I don't want to miss anything. So I'll go ahead and say 5,000. And for this, I want to set this start gift amount parameter or value. So this is, I want gifts greater than or equal to this amount. And for, for this scenario, we'll say $500. And then the other thing is, if we just do it this way, it's going to give us all gifts for all time in our database. So we want to know which gifts we're pulling every month were added in the previous month. So they're going to be added on or after. If you want, you can go in here. Um, you can build an expression and figure out the exact, you know, you can use these formulas to get one month before. Or if you've played around enough with Power Automate, uh, you will know that there's actually just an action that says get past time. It's a lot simpler. I would highly recommend using this instead of trying to fiddle around with a formula. So I'm going to say every month. So every month we're going to get the time. So we're going to say, OK, I want everything from the previous month. And we're going to add in this. So what we're doing is we're just we're getting this value, and then we're putting it in here. And so what I have here, this is all I want to get. This is all the information I want to get. I want to do a lot of stuff with it afterwards. But I actually want to go ahead and save and test this right now. Uh, and one, this is just to, for my own sanity to make sure things are working right. But also, too, it, it's just really helpful to see how the data structure works, to see all of these green checks. It's really exciting when you know that you get it right. And so we see, OK, here are the, here are the inputs that we put in. Here are the outputs. So we have six of these GIFs. And then we have the GIF structure all this information. It's a little bit hard to read. It looks a little bit timid, intimidating if you don't know a ton of code. But rest assured, these are six GIFs and all of the properties associated with these GIFs. OK, so we know what we got. OK, so now we want to do something with that information. And so we want to, for each of these GIFs, uh, at least in this first cut, we're going to be sending an email to a shared inbox. Uh, so we're going to say new step, uh, and we're going to do an apply to each. So that's a control. So it's kind of how you build in this coding logic. So for each of these gifts, and so it, it, it's real confusing. You just there are a lot of things with Power Automate that you just have to play around and know. If you're working with a list of things, especially from a connector call, it's going to be a value. That's saying the set of items included in the response. So it's everything that we saw in that previous, uh, in that previous list gift steps. It's saying, look at all of those. And so what we're going to do for each of those is we're going to send an email notification. And I'm just realizing uh, I always forget this step. So let's go. So I'm going into this flow. So this is just, th this is kind of the workflow builder flow. This is looking at the thing entirely. So let's go in and look at, at this history. So this is a really great feature um, that you can go in and see all the values that you bring in. So in this, I want to include a constituent's name and something about them. The thing is, if I have a list of GIFs, the only information about a constituent that I have uh, is their constituent ID and I think their constituency code, their top constituency code. But so this is an example of sometimes with this with this connector, you're actually talking to the API. You're not going to get all the information that you're used to seeing in a list of GIFs in RENXT. So meaning for each of these GIFs, I don't have any information about the constituent. So before I send this email notification, just go ahead and delete that. I need to go into premium, 
odd. I need to get information about the constituent. Okay, and so for Okay, so for each of these things in the li in the list of gifts, say give me the constituent ID. And then I'm going to now I'm going to be able to do that mail step. Two, and we'll just send this to my personal email or my work email. That's still okay. Arch gift and I want to include a bit of information about this gift. So uh, please out to this donor, thank them for, uh, and we'll do, so uh, donor, and what you do is you just kind of click around and get the information you want here. So everything within the get a constituent. We're gonna say we want the name, um, the amount, and let's say their email address. So then there we go to primary email address, amount. So this one, it's actually not from the get a constituent. This is from that get a gift, um, and this is, too much information to search through. So I'm gonna look for this. And, and so here's another fun part. And by fun, I mean, uh, we'll trip you up if you aren't paying attention. So it, when this list gifts in each of these items, so we have two things. We have the amount value and then the monetary amount of the gift. And those sound like the same thing to me. I, I don't know if they sound like the same thing to you. And so this emphasizes you need to be very careful and attentive to how the data is structured. So if we're looking at one of these gifts right here, so we have a property, we have a property called amount, and we also have this value inside of the amount. So if we just say we want the amount of this gift, it's actually going to give us all of this information. Uh, Power Automate doesn't, do, do you see how this is kind of nested inside of this other thing? Power Automate doesn't do well with nested values. So what you have to say is it's the amount value, and that's how you'll actually get that thousand um, as, you know, in, in your uh in your output, otherwise you're gonna get a weird object here. If you're used to programming, it's just accessing a property of amount, amount dot value. So for this, we want amount value, and that should be good. So let's go ahead and save this. And test it. Yeah, uh, make sure my email's opened up here. And so whenever you're using an apply to each, um, it may take a little bit, especially if you have a lot of information listed in there, um, something like that. And so if you want to, you can go through and see each of these. You can see that it worked. You can see information about the constituent, either that or you can just go over and see this information right here. And as you see, you get a, <laughs> you can get a lot of, you can get a lot of emails. You may want to use this sparingly or send it to a shared account. Um, and then you also see that we have some data quality issues with the email. Maybe we want to include some phone numbers. Um, yeah, there might be some other options here. Uh, at this time, is everybody generally hanging with me? Um, are there any questions about uh, this this version of the flow before we jump into a couple more um, complicated topics. Hey, Cody, we had a question that just came in. Uh, the two email, does it have to be a known email to the system or can it just be any email, i.e. board member? Yeah, so it, it can be any email. Um, it just auto fills um, based on what is already present in your organization. 
sweet. One more question that came through. Is the current example a triggered flow? What type of flow did, uh, did you start with as you were building this? Yeah, so this is a scheduled flow. Um, you could, uh, as of now, we don't have any triggers built into the Razor's Edge NXT connector, so you wouldn't be able to do anything triggered off of stuff happening in Razor's Edge, but you could trigger flow based on a lot of, um, a lot of other things. So somebody submitting a form, a, a email, going to a shared inbox, something like that. Uh, but this one is a scheduled flow. And, and I would say that this or a manually triggered flow at, for the moment, if, if you're just doing stuff in your database, this is going to be your best option. Fantastic. Um, if you have questions and we haven't answered them yet, go ahead and type them into the chat window and uh, we'll answer them uh, throughout today's call or we'll um, hand them over to Cody as we get towards the end of today's call. So don't hesitate to continue uh, typing your questions into the Q&A bar. Uh, Cody, I'll let you just continue forward. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and just to address one other comment um, before we jump into stuff, you can do... Um, you can do all your CRUD operations through Power Automate. Um, this is just getting information out of the database because it's the safest <laughs> and it's probably the easiest place to start because you don't have to worry about accidentally doing something. Um, so let me go ahead and I'll show you two more advanced um, kind of tips and then kind of go into some of those questions. So, okay, so we're seeing this and what I will want is I want it to be a little bit easier for my donors or for my program staff to be able to see information about the donors. And so to me, the easiest way, I could either just include a crap ton of information in this email, or I could just give them a link to a constituent record. And so what this is going to look like, and we're just going into Razor's Edge NXT really fast. Uh, let me make sure I'm in the right site. What I would be doing is, so I see that if I go to a constituent record, this is Wendy Hernandez, the URL for this record is host.nxt.blackbot.com slash constituent slash records, and then it's this 410. And if you're familiar, you know, if you notice, the constituent ID here is 404. It says 410 up here. What What's happening? So the thing in the URL the number in the URL, this is the constituent ID. It's the actual constituent ID. It's what the database knows as your constituent ID. But what is listed here is actually the lookup ID. It's confusing. It's not ideal. It's just something to look out for. If you're working around with IDs and you see information that you weren't expecting, think about what type of an ID this is. So again, in the interface, it's the lookup ID. And in the URL, it's the actual constituent ID or action ID or anything like that. And, and the reason for that is because you can actually change the lookup ID. And, and so that makes it really, really hard to actually use that as the like key information in the database. But anyways, uh, that's an aside and also in our documentation site. So if I'm going to copy this URL, go back into my flow. And I'm pretty sure you could do this without going into the code view, the HTML view, but I'm more familiar with that. So I'm gonna do it that way. So don't be intimidated. I'm just adding a, uh, this is just saying, put in a link. Uh, make sure I get my brackets right. And put in a link here. And for this, so I want to do, so I have the choice of, so I have the lookup ID, but that's not actually what I want because that wouldn't send me to the right place. It's the ID, the system record ID. And again, you can see um, there, there's a little bit of information in help text, but that's just something that you want to check. That's a good uh, emphasis for, if you aren't sure, look at the help text, probably more information is there. So here you go. So this is one improvement. Oh, interesting. I've never done that before. Uh, oh, whoops. 
Uh, sorry about that. Don't know what happened there. Uh, I think I messed up my brackets. What the? Oh, that's really annoying. Okay, well, let me try that again. <laughs> so, records. What did you say earlier, Cody, about live demos? <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. No, it, it's, uh, it, know, it's, it knows that it's being watched and it's not behaving. Uh, go, so that should be, okay, now it just deleted the name, but I can get that back. So this should work fine. So let's test it out. And for this, you can either keep on quote unquote performing the trigger action, um, but we actually already have the data. The only data that we're getting, it, we've already gotten all of it. So we can just use this because we're just changing the output of what we're doing. We're not, we don't actually need to talk to Razor's Edge NXT anymore. We just need to get that information. So it's gonna take a little bit applying to each. Okay, so it says that it worked. Let's see. Okay, so let's see. Uh, and don't pay attention to that. I just have a lot of internal environments and it's asking me which one to be. So yeah, so it works. So we have a link to a record inside of the database. Um, and so that, that'll make it a lot easier to consume these notifications. Uh, and again, you could do something like this for the gift. You can do something like this for the constituent. You could do something like this for actions. Um, the URL might be a little bit different. I know that sometimes uh, internally we need to do a better job on this. We don't always have the same structure for our URLs. But so just make sure that you're looking for that and you're also always using the uh, ID related to that get a constituent. Uh, so the, if you share this URL, um, your program staff or whoever would only have access uh, to the, the record if they had access to it already. Um, so you're not, you're not giving anybody access, it's just if, if they can't access it, they can get to it better. Um, and so I'm gonna go into the last sort of improvement here. Uh, let me see if that's going to work. So what I want to do is I want to make this a little bit easier even for, um, I'm going to make this a little bit easier for my staff because right now this, this could be a lot of emails. You know, either this is going to one person or this is going to a shared inbox or shared Teams channel. This is a lot of things and I don't want to fill it up that much. So what I want to do is I want to add some branching to let's say send it to different people based on the fund that it's related to. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Um, and, and I could rebuild it if I wanted to, but you know, you said to get the idea. So I'm gonna do, so for each of these gifts, so we're gonna apply to each of these gifts, I want to get information about the fund. I'm going to use that for some of that branching logic that I talked about earlier. So get a fund. Okay, and so the fund ID, so I'm going to go, so I don't need the stuff and get a constituent. I actually need to, don't need that. I need something from the gifts. So the gift splits fund ID is the only one that it shows. And then sometimes Power Automate, it, it's smart, but sometimes it'll kind of try and shock you. <laughs> it's like, what? What the heck, I, I had an apply, to, why did you just add an apply to each here? I was just trying to get this and, and you might go back and forth um, and try and work with this. Uh, but what it's doing is, and again, so much of this comes down to that data structure. So if we're looking at a gift, so this first gift here, come up. So how each gift is structured is there's a property called gift splits and for a lot of gifts, it, it might only be one. And so there's an ID, there's an amount, there's everything like that. But the thing is, and Power Automate is smart enough to know this, there could be, if you have a split gift, if you have a gift going to multiple funds, there could be multiple values here. So whenever there's a chance for multiple values, 
you have to do an apply to each just to you know let Power Automate know, hey, there may only be one, but you may need to cycle through a couple of things. So for this apply to each, uh, I'm getting a fund for everything in the gift splits. I think most of my gifts are only going to one fund, so that won't be an issue. Um, and even if, you know, I say it's going to multiple funds, I actually might want both sets of people to go to this. Um, and yes, this definitely, this is a more complicated version of it. Um, but I, I think it, it's fun to sort of look at like what's possible. This is definitely, yes, like more complicated um, and definitely not required uh, for using this connector. So we could do a condition, but that would be if I have more than one fund or a couple of different things, that might not be the best. So actually what I'm going to do is do a switch statement. And so what I'm saying is for each of these funds, I'm going to say, because I'm more familiar with the lookup ID of these funds, so it's saying based on this value, if this value equals, uh, there's case one, case two, you can expand it out kind of wherever. If this case, so if this lookup ID equals, uh, I think we have camp, we have science, and we'll just leave it as default. So I'm going to say send a mail notification if it's camp. Uh, and just, uh, let me see. The fun lookup is that. Let's try and see. If it'll let me copy. Sometimes it doesn't like to, yep, it doesn't like to copy in between different nested steps. So we'll just add my name again. The fun lookup is. Uh, actually, let me, let me do slightly different there. Uh, should be science. Should be camp. And then let's do that. And so uh, obviously this isn't uh, this isn't what you would send out to your staff. This isn't what you would send anybody. This is just testing to make sure it works. So we have three cases. So if it's if it's related to a camp fund, it's going to send one thing, or to one group of people. If it says science, it's going to say another thing. If it's a default, so if there if there's no information that's helpful, then it'll uh, it won't do anything. So let's do perform the trigger action. Hey, Cody, while you're working on that, quick question for you. Yeah. Uh, can you identify more than one person to receive an email? And can the list show more than one donor per email? Um, so, yes, the, both of those definitely are uh, an option. So for sure, you can add more than one pe person per the email. That's really easy. Uh, so this, this worked. That's good. Uh, so yeah, you would absolutely, you could just say, um, Uh, so yeah, you can send it to as many people as you want. You could also send, say you want to send different sorts of emails to different sorts of people. You could add another step here. You could post in a Teams channel. You can do as much as you want with that. With the sending more than one donors per email, um, the way that this is structured, no. But um, we have a, another tutorial so this is a birthday notification tutorial, and I forget which step it's in. Um, yeah, so, uh, and, and I'll go through this in just a second, but the way, let me just go out to that guy. Um, so the way that you would do that is you would, I think this is it. 
And in this, as, as well as the other flow, um, they are both available on our websites where you can download them and import them into your uh, into your environment. So what you would do is you're going to create an empty a list, and then for each of these gifts, you would add information about that gift to the list, and then you would create a table and then send the email based on that table. Um, and, and so that would definitely be an option. And, and I don't have time to go into that uh, super right now, but I would say the, the best, if, if you're looking at that, look at the birthday notification tutorial, and that should give you a better idea of how to work with that. Um, but looking at our original one, so science, we're seeing science, camp, we're seeing camp, science, we're seeing science, and if we go to the run history, let's go to the most recent one. And you have to you have to jump into a lot of different boxes here. <laughs> We're inside of an apply to each and an apply to each inside of a split uh, or switch. So for each of these, uh, so it's library, so it didn't meet any of our conditions. So it went to the default, which means it does nothing. The next gift was library also. Uh, and then this one was camp. So it sent, it matched this first case, and then it sent an email. And so is that that is the end of this demo. Again, there are a lot of other resources on this site, on this documentation site, including we have an entire tutorial with something already pre-built for you um, that you can go in and use um, that's going to give you this pretty much out of the box. Um, but with that, we're going to jump back into the presentation and go through a few more just caveats about Microsoft Power Automate. Uh, any other questions that I didn't answer so far? So we've gotten a couple of questions um, about how does what you're sharing with Power Automate compare to what's available with NXT workflows? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, no, that, that's a very good question. And it's uh, something that we, we uh, have definitely talked about a lot internally. So, the difference between, I'd say that the difference between uh, workflow designer and RNXT, and this is primarily if you're going to be talking to a lot of systems, um, especially to so anything outside of Razor's Edge NXT, that's, that's going to be one of the main points because uh, workflow designer, it can't talk to, um, say you want to do something related with Twitter, or you want to add somebody to a spreadsheet, or you want to send another email to internal staff who are in your database. Anything that involves an external system is going to be a great use case. The other one I would say would be if you want to um, get a little bit more complicated. So I would say that this is kind of the next step up from Workflow Designer. Um, I forget who mentioned it, that Power Automate can get very complicated. It can get a little bit scary. Uh, and in that sense, it's a little bit harder to use than Workflow Designer, but also you can do a lot more with it. And so I, I would say that that would be a, if you have very complicated scenarios or if you're talking to external systems. Okay, and let me make sure. Um, is a fundraiser or solicitor assigned to a gift or a constituent a branching option? I, uh, yes, it, it definitely could be. That value is definitely contained on the gift. Uh, I forget, I think it's on the gift and on the constituent. Um, that's something that I would need to look at the um, API reference or the connector definition, um, either that or just start playing around and calling for lists and seeing what is there. You may have to go through one or two steps. I think there's a, um, 
there's a list constitu list fundraisers for a single constituent. So you would have to get that information and then kind of key off that. So it looks like that's all the questions for right now. Again, we'll have a little bit of time at the end. Uh, just a couple of follow up and, and most of this we kind of covered uh, in the demo, but just some reminders of uh, things. So when you're working with Power Automate, I would, I would say just start small, get something going. That's the point of these tutorials that we've made uh, live on our doc site. Um, and also the point of uh, this webinar today, just to get you something small to get going, see the value, and then you can get more complicated once you understand the system. Uh, the other one, again, is learning the data structures. It, it is <laughs> just to know what fields to put um, what sorts of records contain what information, how you get from A to B. You can either learn that by testing out those API calls or um, go into the API reference in the Sky Developer. Um, and just especially properties that are nested are hard. Uh, and, I, and I'll talk more about that actually in our webinar on Thursday about Power Apps. The other thing, pay attention to your IDs. If you are working with an ID and you see something that you didn't expect, you're probably using the wrong ID. And finally, automate wisely. So there are certain types of problems that Power Automate works for very well. Um, and, and I'll go through that in a second. But there are also ones where it might not be worth your while. So a good example is the one that we just did. This is a real life use case of having a gift notification. Um, sending information outside of your database. Um, another one is going to be uh, that we've seen that real customers are using is they have a shared inbox, they have customers, or uh, they have constituents, sorry. They have constituents who want to unsubscribe from emails, and uh, they want to capture information about that and raise this to NXT. They want to update their consent. And so that's uh, when you have a couple of uh, items related to each other. That's a really good use case. Um, and so just think about things that are time consuming, uh, either involving a lot of people or a lot of steps. They're repetitive, uh, meaning especially when you're t entering the same data and a lot of different systems. Um, it's predictable. If you can't draw out a you know process diagram for how a certain workflow should work, you're going to have a really hard time making it in Power Automate because that's essentially what it is. And then the final one uh, to that cred question uh, earlier, it, it's best to start with data out. Um, you, you can definitely bring data into your database. You can definitely update information in your database. It's just if you don't exactly know what you're doing and you're still getting used to it, you just want to be really careful with that data quality. I, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that because uh, you're probably might be some DBAs in the audience, and that's always something you're interested in. Um, if you're looking to learn more, and I think uh, Robin has shared a lot of these links uh, already, but uh, you can learn more about the Microsoft connectors. Uh, we have an entire kind of subsection of that Sky API site, um, just with demos and tutorials related to this. Um, you can visit the connector reference. Uh, there's a community that we've started um, that you can share tips and tricks with other people who are working with this. And then you can follow uh, announcements related to all of Sky Developer um, on our blog. Again, just one final pitch of you can um, you can either rewatch this webinar if you really wanted to hear my voice for 50 more minutes, or you can come to our uh, our webinar on Thursday. You can watch any of the other ones. And other than that, that's all the schedule presentation that I have. Uh, Robin, do we have any additional questions? We had a couple of questions that came in specifically about if I have questions or if I need help, who should I reach out to? Should I call support? Um, uh, so you want to answer that one, Cody? If not, you can toss it back to me and I can answer it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I can answer it, and you just correct me if I'm telling lies. Um, so your primary resource is, is going to be either our documentation site. Uh, Microsoft has a lot of documentation uh, actually around Power Automate and Power Apps, a lot of tutorials. 
and then the the community uh, w within Sky Developer that we've set up um, that should be in the links for this. Those are going to be your primary options. Um, you can, we are offering support. I think it's if the connector isn't working properly, but at the moment we aren't supporting building workflows. Is that the correct answer for that, Robin? Yeah, that is correct. We do have two partners um, identified. One is called Planet Technologies. The other is Flores.nl that um, can help uh, organizations uh, in U.S., Canada, or the U.K. and Europe. Um, and those guys can actually build stuff for you, or they consult with you. Can consult with you on just troubleshooting any code that you might be building out. So um, you do have some options where we've got two different partners that can help support you. And these guys are experts both at um, the Razor's Edge NXT as well as the Microsoft Power Platform. So um, they should be able to help you with whatever you might have. Yep. Uh, and then to answer. Uh, questions related to that initial uh, testing your connection. So um, you uh, you would create it with a manual trigger. So th there, there are no triggers right now that exist for, like, you can't kick off a workflow when a new constituent is added, or you can't kick off a workflow when a new gift is added, but you can use any triggers within the um, Microsoft Power Automate has a lot of existing triggers. So we just don't have any triggers right now that are specific to uh, our connector. And so you just use one of those built-in Microsoft ones to, text, to test it. Um, and I guess that's actually another differentiator right now between Workflow Designer and Power Automate is that Workflow Designer, I think they... I don't know which stage of release it's in, um, but I believe you can kick off a workflow based off of when somebody gives a gift. Um, and so they may be more, there may be more functionality related to triggering things based on things happen on, happening in your database versus things, you know, like every period of time or something like that. Hey, Cody, we had another question about cost. Um, what costs are um, associated with this? Yeah, so there's it, it, it's a little bit of a weird structure. There's no cost from our side. We want to offer this for free, but um, how Microsoft has it set up is you, to use their platform and use any other connector besides Microsoft. There's a fee um, associated with either you can do a per user plan or you can do a per workflow plan. And so those have different pricing options. There's actually in the um, initial, in our uh, on our documentation site, in our initial setup tutorial, there's a lot of resources around that. Um, and uh, the, the rates are relatively low. They have some discounts available for nonprofits, and you can also get a free trial um, to try it out. Uh, but that's as much as I can answer. I will say that Microsoft pricing, um, is there a political way to put it? I, I guess it's confusing for everybody, uh, but the best person to reach out to is your Microsoft rep on those pricing questions. Perfect. All right. I think that's all the questions that we have for today. Um, we do want to uh, quickly put a quick poll question up in case you have any, um, if it, in case you're looking for any additional information. So what you should see on the screen now is a quick poll question. Um, what um, what we want to accomplish with this question is to figure out where you are today so that we can help answer any questions or provide you any information. So if you're not using Razor's Edge NXT today, just let us know and we'll give you a call to talk a little bit more about it. Um, if you have uh, NXT um, but you don't have the Microsoft Power Platform, um, let us know and we'll send you the information to get in touch with uh, Microsoft to learn more about the licenses, as Cody just mentioned. And uh, finally, if you have both solutions today and you're ready to start building something, let us know and uh, we'll uh, ensure that you have the resources in your inbox to help you get started. In addition to the session that we're having on Thursday uh, that's going to be covering off um, uh, Power Apps, 
um, in addition to what you've seen today with Power Automate. Um, it's important to note if you have a coworker or somebody who you think would uh, gain a lot from today's webinar, um, it's available on demand as well as the rest of our webinars that have been included in the uh, developer series. So uh, you can access those uh, on-demand webinars in the same place that you uh, registered for today's webinar. So uh, any closing thoughts, Cody, before we wrap up for today? Uh, no, I mean, just thank you. I guess three, just thank you for being here. Uh, number two, check out the documentation site. We have some stuff uh, for you to get up and running in five minutes. Um, and then the other one is if, you, if you're interested in Power Apps, uh, come to the webinar on Thursday or watch it on demand. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your afternoon. Bye-bye.